Hey guys, my name is Grant, and this video is the first installment of a three video series answering the question, should Christians celebrate Christmas? Alternatively named Jingle Bells or Jingle Hell? Oh, I actually wasn't sure if that intro was too spicy. Uh, so I'm sorry, it was a joke, maybe misplaced. Please forgive me, I hope not to offend. But uh, anyway, upon hearing the title and the subject of this video, I imagine there are three types of people out there. One, there's a type of people who this is the first you've heard of this. You didn't know this was a thing people were saying because you're like, hey, let's put the Christ back in Christmas. He's the reason for the season, right? Like all of that stuff. And then there's people like myself who maybe you've heard some of these things and maybe you even assume that a lot of them are true, but you know, who really cares? Christmas is what you make it, right? And then there's a third type who's like, all in anti-Christmas. This is the devil's day. You know, you're super excited to talk about it in the comments. And I think I, I honestly believe that this video series is going to have some surprising information for all three of those groups. And so I would suggest that before judging, watch the video in full, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the rest of this series. So as I just mentioned, this subject is gonna be broken up into three videos. In the video you're watching now, we're going to be asking the question, what, if anything, does the Bible have to say about Christmas? In video number two, we're going to be talking about the date of Christmas, December 25th, and if Christians just co-opted some uh, pagan holiday and, and, and took all of its tradition as their own, and so then the question becomes, well, if, if we then are celebrating, are we unwittingly celebrating that pagan holiday and not our own Lord and Savior, Jesus? Um, and then in the third video, we're going to be talking about the various traditions about Christmas, right? So Christmas trees, Yule logs, Satan, I mean Santa, and whether or not it, Christmas is pagan in its origins, could we not be potentially partaking in certain pagan practices that come from different pagan and non-Christian religions? Our objective is honestly to take a look at history and Christian belief and parse out myth from fact and learn what we can about the origins of the quote, most wonderful time of the year. But first I have a confession to make. I have a pretty major bias when it comes to this subject because if I'm honest, I love Christmas. I love everything that has to do with Christmas. I love hot chocolate. I love Christmas trees. I love the movie Elf. I love the Grinch. You know, the story of redemption of somebody who hates something and then turns turns around to, to love it, you know, maybe is the story that some of you might mimic while watching this video. Who knows? But I, I love candy canes. I love the colors red and green. I love Christmas. But even through all of my bias, when I first was told that Christmas was a pagan holiday that Christians had co-opted. It somehow made sense. There's something about the idea of like cutting down trees and bringing them inside and decorating them that just sort of vibes very pagan from the from the beginning. You know, it feels like it could be some some Celtic thing or or, or some weird, you know, Roman uh, holiday that we took. But even with all of that, I still celebrated Christmas because in my mind, who cares what the origins are? Just like the conclusion of an endless number of Hallmark Channel Christmas movies, Christmas is what you make it. So if, for instance, you're a single female attorney from the big city who's missed the last seven Christmases with her family, but you're just so happen to be forced to return to your hometown where you meet a knockoff Ryan Reynolds, not Ryan Reynolds, but someone who kind of looks like Ryan Reynolds, who teaches you how to ride a horse, even though you initially struggle because all you wear are pantsuits, but the journey between you, knockoff Ryan Reynolds, the horse, and your elderly mother and father remind you of the true meaning of Christmas, that it is to share your heart with someone special. Well, well, then good on ya. Okay, who cares? If that's what it means to you, then that's what it means to you. That's, that's how I felt about it. And I was honestly completely prepared to argue that in this video series as I approached the material, that yes, even though Christmas probably has roots in paganism, if God can redeem us to show forth his glory, surely he can do the same with a holiday, which to be fair, I think is a great lesson. And honestly, no doubts, as I began my research, everything I was seeing validated my beliefs, right? The, the, root, the pagan roots of Christmas are fairly common knowledge. And I came across more than a few articles and videos who argued that with me. But as I continued down this rabbit trail, I started to get into more scholarly articles. 
and getting into actual historical sources and trying to figure out if Christmas comes from a pagan holiday, well, which exactly which pagan holiday? And not only did I find, um, so spoilers, this is kind of the whole thing, but hopefully you'll stick with me to, to walk along this journey. Not only did I find that there's no evidence that Christmas was pagan in its roots, but I found out that Christmas trees actually came from a German play about Adam and Eve, and mistletoe was invented by working class English people, and Santa actually has no relation to Satan. But before we get into all of that, let's take a moment and ask a much more basic question, and probably the question that all Christians should ask first about anything, and it's this. What does the Bible have to say about this topic? See, the question, should Christians celebrate Christmas, is not a new one. In fact, Scottish reformer John Knox says holidays like Christmas were, quote, imposed upon the consciences of men without expressed command from God's word. And he goes on to say, that obstinate maintainers and teachers of such abominations ought not to escape punishment of the civil magistrate. So John Knox is saying that if you teach Christmas or celebrate Christmas, that you should actually be punished by law, which seems a little bit harsh. But to be fair, Knox was living in a world in which his participation in holidays like Christmas were paramount to basically salvation. But in the center, he brings up a a really interesting point which many raise as their first attack on Christmas. Where does the Bible tell us to celebrate Christmas? The implication of this question is that if the Bible doesn't say that Jesus was born on December 25th and that in order to celebrate his birth, everyone should give gifts to each other, then Christians should not partake in it. And while I do agree that if the Bible doesn't mandate it, then neither should we as a culture or as, or as the church. There's no reason to believe that if the Bible doesn't specifically require something, then it should be outlawed altogether. So here's what I mean. The Bible doesn't tell us to shake hands when we greet someone or to wear pants at the grocery store. The Bible never tells us to use toilet paper. But if all these traditions are basically harmless, We know that the Bible doesn't outlaw them. In that same way, celebrations, unless they transgress some law in the scriptures, are not outlawed because the Bible doesn't tell us to celebrate them. But the question becomes, does the Bible specifically forbid the celebration of Christmas? There are a few scriptures that people believe are about the celebration of Christmas. So we're going to tackle them. But before we go there, let me lay out that no one actually claims that any Christmas or Christmas traditions was actually being celebrated during biblical times. So should the Bible have anything to say about it, it would be completely uh, futuristic and prophetic and would have actually zero application to the original audience. And yes, God could do this, but to me, it makes it far less likely. So with that in mind, let's tackle some of the common scriptures used as anti-Christmas scriptures. So first, Jeremiah 10, 2 through 4, it says this, Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the nations, or be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are vanity. A tree from the forest is cut down and worked with the axe by the hands of a craftsman. They decorate it in silver and gold. They fasten it with a hammer and nails so that it cannot move. So this sounds pretty familiar. We're cutting down a tree. We're decorating it. The song Silver and Gold, right? This is obviously Christmas. This scripture is used by countless sources to condemn the use of Christmas trees. Images like this are all over the internet. But I think reading just one more verse brings some much needed clarification to the issue. Jeremiah 10, 5 goes on to say, Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither is it in them to do good. So verse 5 clarifies exactly what Jeremiah is describing in the above passage, the carving of idols. He says they're like scarecrows, which would be an interesting comparison to just a a tree that you've chopped down and, and decorated like a Christmas tree. He also says they cannot speak and that they're worked by the hands of a craftsman, right? All of these things would be very weird things to say about a Christmas tree, which essentially a Christmas tree is a tree cut in the middle, and then you just stand it up there and you wrap it in things. And so I I think we can 
we can pretty well conclude he is not talking about Christmas trees here. Another one used is Isaiah 44, 14 through 15. It says this, he cuts down cedars or he chooses a cypress tree or an oak and lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a cedar and the rain nourishes it. Then it becomes fuel for a man. He takes part of it and warms himself. He kindles a fire and makes bread. He, he makes a God and worships it. He makes it an idol and falls down before it. Now, the argument here is that when one gets down to receive their presence from below the Christmas tree, that they're doing what uh, Isaiah is talking about. In this passage, they're falling down and they're kneeling before this idol and worshiping it. But as YouTuber Inspiring Philosophy points out, when you bend down on your knees to fix a flat on your car, you're not worshiping your car. So if kneeling is the most effective way to do something, that doesn't mean you're worshiping whatever you happen to be kneeling in front of. And this is something that oftentimes I think the, the letter of the law types ignore, which is that intent matters, that God sees the intent of the heart. So another one people use is Jeremiah 3.13. It says, only acknowledge your guilt that you rebelled against the Lord and scattered your favors among foreigners under every green tree. Oh, here it is. And that you have not obeyed my voice, declares the Lord. Now, it needs to be stated that no one, and I mean no one, claims that Christmas trees were a thing during Jeremiah's day. But the question is, did he look to the future and see us placing gifts beneath a tree? In Jeremiah's day, idols would typically sit beneath trees because of the shade it provided for worshipers. So if you've ever seen people like lay fruit uh, at an outdoor statue of a Buddha, this is more so what Jeremiah is talking about. So it appears to me that the Bible doesn't actually talk about Christmas at all, which again, the fact that the Bible doesn't mention Christmas or mandate the celebration of Christmas does not then outlaw the celebration of Christmas. And it doesn't seem to me that any of these biblical passages we've read seem to outlaw the the celebration of any of the things that, that Christmas does. And so I think I've concluded at least that the Bible doesn't actually have anything to say about Christmas. In the next video, we're going to be tackling whether or not Christians took Christmas as their own holiday from a pagan nation. But I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and I would love to see some questions or some verses maybe I missed in the comments, and I would love to come around and, and touch on them in another video or maybe just in the comment section. But for now, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.